Every Friday, we're going to be taking the time to answer your most press pressing questions, rather, about the coronavirus. And this morning, we are talking about testing, testing and its accessibility, and what could be the best option for you. Now, diagnostic testing determines if you currently have the virus, while the antibody blood tests check if you have previously been infected. CBS News Chief Medical Correspondent, that's Dr. John LaPook, joins us to sort it all out. John, always good to see you. Let's talk, let's talk about all these new testings Very that are coming, these tested. Let's talk rather about the new tests that are coming on the market, like the saliva test. Every day we hear about a new form of testing. So how do you know which one is the best one for you to take? It can really be confusing, Gail, can it be? And that saliva test is really interesting, but let's just review. The test that goes into the nose and the back of the throat, that's the PCR, and that's to look if you have active virus. They're looking for viral particles, right, or evidence of it. The blood test is looking for an antibody. It's called serology, and it's to show whether you've been exposed. It doesn't say whether you have active virus in your system. Now, that saliva test just came out of Yale. I took a look at it. Really interesting. You know, people don't like the, the swab being jammed in the back of their nose. It can be very unpleasant. And they found that it, was, um, it could be just as good. It was a small number of people uh, that were tested, about 44 people who actually were ill and about 98 people uh, who were healthcare workers who were followed. And actually, they found that it might even be a little more sensitive. I wanted to know exactly what it was. Did you just spit into a jar? Is it a little bit, bit of spit? They said it's about a third of a sterile urine container so it's not a little amount of spit but more study has to be done with that it'll be really interesting to see if that ends up being uh, better because I think it could be more widespread you don't have exposure of healthcare workers to uh, the possibility of getting infected you could do it at home and then send it in I, I do like the sound of that I always find John when doctors say something is unpleasant or uncomfortable <clears throat> it's gonna hurt so we have a question from Ann <laughs> and I think that's a great question. She says, I thought you could only get tested if you're symptomatic and have a doctor's note. She asked this, why do the experts say testing is so important when you won't be able to be tested? I think this is a really great question, especially after Adriana's piece the last half hour, where a medical worker couldn't even get a test from her own hospital. Yeah, absolutely. And let's just start off by saying we absolutely still do not have enough widespread testing. You know, we, we don't have the ability to test every single person who we want to test uh, with either test, with either the diagnostic test or the antibody test. Uh, now, of course, if somebody is sick, you want to know if they have it. That's pretty obvious. But the, when you're talking about wanting to open up parts of the country and whether it's safe, you have to know not only is there active virus in people, so you want to just test people randomly to see if people who don't have any symptoms are carrying the virus, but also you want to get an idea of what's been going on in the last several months. You know, so many of us during the winter, Gail, uh, had a little bit of a cold, a sniffle, a sore throat. You know, chills, diarrhea, we're hearing about all these different symptoms that can be associated with COVID-19 and coronavirus infection. So we want to know, well, maybe I was infected. That's the antibody test. And if we do that more widely, then we'll get an idea, well, how prevalent was it in, in the last few months? Was it just a couple of percentage of people? Was it much higher? We saw a little bit over 20% of people tested positive in New York City. Is it reliable? So there are so many questions that we need to know before we open up parts of the country, because otherwise you're doing it blindly. And the symptoms keep changing, so I hear you say that even if you don't have symptoms, you should get tested. Here's a viewer question from Carol Ann on Facebook. She says, no, uh, when will the antibody test be... Uh, Go ahead. I want to I wanna actually correct... I'm going to correct that, actually. Sorry. Even if you don't get tested, you should be... Okay. Even if you don't have symptoms, you should be tested. That's a tricky question. That's people who, when, when public health officials are trying to figure out who in the population uh, may have been infected and what's going on in terms of community spread, those are the people without symptoms who should be tested. Otherwise, uh, if you don't have any symptoms and you weren't exposed to somebody who had symptoms and there's no other reason to do a test, the CDC and the state have big lists of people who get tested with either one of these tests, like healthcare workers, first responders, people who are sick, people who are exposed, et cetera, et cetera. It can be really confusing. You have to talk to your doctor about whether you get tested, but it's not, I'm not saying that everybody should get tested right now, although I think if there were 300 million tests, it would be nice to test everybody, but we don't have that right now. Yeah, okay. Thank you for the correction. I just know everybody's so nervous. Everybody wants to get a test, but your correction is very important. Of course. Thank you, John.